This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. For the second time in the last three weeks, we get to talk about a win. Sounds kind of crazy. We're going to get into it in just a minute, but first, download the Prize Picks app today. See code uh, CLNS. Make sure you put that in there. Get 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get 50 bucks instantly when you play five. You also want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code CLNS for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Before we get to the game, we always do this. We get to the headlines first. And Greg, over the weekend, right before the Patriots played the Bears in Chicago, they decided to claim Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, your thoughts when you saw that move? Uh, my immediate thought was um, basically they picked up the equivalent of Josh Uche um, and kept their draft pick in their pocket that they got for Uche. Um, yeah. It was, you know, they sent – they sent uh, – sort of a designated pass rusher out the door and they brought in one. Now I know Mayo and other people have talked up his ability to play all three downs. That's never been really a strength of him. Uh, his, he's not really the most disciplined guy as far as defending the run or rushing the passer. Um, certainly a talented guy. That's for sure. Um, you know, has been one of those guys that, uh, is able to affect the quarterback. Um, but I think it was just the Patriots don't have – once they sent Uche out the door, they don't really have anybody, like, in the wings, like, waiting to, you know, be, like, a designated pass rusher. Um, you know, you can talk all you want about, you know, Anthony Jennings and Keon White playing more snaps or this, that, and the other. Or, you know, if you want to talk yourself into O'Shawn Mathis or something like that, you know – more power to you, but they didn't really, they, they don't really have anybody. So to get somebody in the mix that can take up some snaps, they claimed in Gakwe. I, I think it's a good move. Um, you know, perhaps he, he has something that he can give you in the future and you're getting them in the building right now, but I think it's just, uh, they need pass rush help, um, <laughs> to ignore what happened on Sunday. Um, this was a team that had eight sacks entering, um, Sunday's game before they had, uh, nine. So, it was uh, – they were looking for pass rush, uh, pass rush help, and I thought it was a good, solid move. Yeah, I think it's an upgrade over Uche, and as you said, you get the pick for Uche, so you replace the spot on the roster. Uh, and this is really when the very early injury to Uche and Zimenez is something that we kind of overlook, but Zimenez, yep. I think, was yeah. going to be that guy. And mm -hmm. Uche, if he was moved off the roster – like he was, Zimenez would just slot right in, and he had a pretty good preseason. Then he tore his ACL, and that was that. So you have a bunch of youth behind uh, behind Uche. So you make that move that they made for Ngakwe. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, did it make sense to you that Raekwon McMillan was the guy out after the move? Yeah, he really hadn't done anything. Um, you know, I'm sure there's other – there's – some depth pieces that maybe could have moved before him because he's, he has experience, but I think the Patriots are, um, they're in a place right now where they are, uh, tilting towards youth that they're they're They'd rather give the playing time and, you know, possibly, you know, bank somebody, keep them on the roster. Who's, you know, a first or second year player rather than somebody like Raekwon McMillan, who's, who's been around the block, a few times, not saying that he's old or anything like that, but I think that they would, they would rather keep uh, some of the guys that they have on their roster and just uh, let go of some veterans that don't have much of a future here. It's interesting, Greg, because you look at that linebacker spot, uh, McMillan is gone. We know Bentley is done for the season. Uh, Christian Ellis missed this past weekend with an injury. And then during the game, Sione Taki Taki left with a hamstring injury. Does How concerned are you? How concerned are you about that linebacker spot? Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to be. Um, I mean, Ellis is really a special teams guy. You know, he shouldn't be starting. I mean, really, I mean, this is why Taki Taki was brought in here, but the guy cannot stay healthy. He gets hurt every time he's on the field. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw, you know, Curtis Jacobs was out there. They brought up Joe Giles Harris. Um, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a concern. I'm not overly concerned because, you know, especially once they get Duggar back from injury, um, 
you know, they have enough safeties, you know, could get schooler into the mix a little bit more. Um, and you know, most, most of this, the NFL game is now sub package anyway. So, you know, linebackers, I, you know, they're, you need them, but uh, I'm not overly worried about it. Yeah, and, and some might be thinking about Tyrell Dotson, who was released by Seattle uh, yesterday, which was a pretty interesting move because Dotson is the leading tackler for the Seahawks. Looks like Mike McDonald is is you know trying to shake some things up on that second level. I would say that Dotson is somebody that did not do a great job against the run. So if you're concerned about the run defense, I don't know if Dotson is the guy to – to go out there and try to claim, but he is an interesting name because he was highly productive with Seattle this year. Uh, he's good in coverage and he's only 26 years old. So I would not be shocked if the Patriots could have some interest in Dotson, but we'll see if that comes together or not. All right. Kendrick Bourne, wide receiver. Another big storyline to me over the weekend, Greg, was the fact that Kendrick didn't play. And I know that Andrew Callahan came out and said that one of his sources told him that Bourne did not play because they wanted to play the younger receivers, which to me, it makes a lot of sense. I, I could buy that. I, I could buy that explanation until I see KJ Osborne get 27 snaps. So Greg, why was Kendrick Bourne really not playing on Sunday? Yeah, I don't know for sure the answer, but I didn't, when I heard Andrew's report, which I'm sure somebody in the building told him that, um, I didn't believe it, quite frankly. Um, to me, it smells like, Kendrick Bourne did something wrong and was punished in this game. And really, he was only going to play in case of injury or, uh, you know, if it was a situation where they had to drop back to pass like 57 times, um, he could have been used to spell somebody a time or two. But, um, you know, Kendrick, Kendrick, for as good of a morale guy as he is, uh, certainly a cheerleader, a talker, good with the media, uh, he's had his issues here as far as remaining focused, um, you know, doing everything he's supposed to be to, to do to me, this, this reeks of, he did something late for a meeting, didn't show up. Um, you know, his film hasn't been great, but, uh, to me that it, it smelled to me like this was punishment. And that was a cover story. Yeah. The false start followed by being short of the sticks. Some of the stuff that you brought up to Greg about his route running, a lack of detail. You wonder if that played a role into it as well, that they're just trying to get people on the same page. Uh, but it, it's it's definitely something that, that should have our attention because, again, the idea of, oh, we just wanted to get the young guys in there when Javon Baker got four snaps and Osborne got 27. Yeah, I'm not picking up what that source is trying to put down. I ain't believing it. Uh, we can believe something because it's confirmed. We know it happened. Shane Waldron fired by Chicago earlier today. Uh, just Greg, when you look at the Waldron situation playing out with the rookie quarterback that was picked very high, Caleb Williams at number one, of course, compare that to the Patriots situation and how this might kind of set a domino effect for the Patriots. Yeah, well, I mean, it it um, it worries me. I think it's the it's the cautionary tale um, that if the Patriots don't get certain things right here, um, this could be them. And actually, you could make the case that. And, and I don't know, I think we might have talked about this last week when we talked about Caleb Williams and Drake May and who would you rather have now or five years from now. And, you know, I brought up the scenario where, you know, you could make the case that Caleb Williams will be in a better position next year if they blow out the building, which they already blew, blew out the offensive coordinator. Um, we'll see if people can save their jobs ag again. Um, by making a run, changing things up with Thomas Brown as the new offensive coordinator, even though you know I, I, he doesn't have a whole lot of experience doing this, um, you know you could make the case that if the Bears blow everybody out of the building and they sign Ben Johnson from the Lions and he's now the head coach and he's you know he's got talent, he's got Caleb Williams, Caleb, you know he has a track record. Everybody sees what he's done in in Detroit, um, and you could make the case that. Caleb's in a better position. The Patriots aren't all that dissimilar from the Bears. Uh, defensive head coach, West, a simplified West Coast offensive coordinator, Waldron and Van Pelt are are very similar. Um, you know, let's just play out the the Patriots scenario. In all likelihood, Gerard Mayo is back 
next year. Um, you know, the more they they win against some of the dregs that they're playing, the more that increases the chance. I think I, I think last week before this game, I said it was about a fifteen percent chance that Mayo wasn't back. I'd put that down at now seven percent, uh, probably. But you know, let's play it out. So Drake's a rookie right now. Mayo comes back. You know, let's they go through next season. Say it's not great. And are they in the same position where Van Pelt is sort of the Shane Waldron and they're firing him and they're bringing in a new offensive coordinator? Now, all of a sudden, Drake May's third year, he has a new offensive coordinator or if not a new head coach. So Caleb is now he would be in his second year with a Ben Johnson type. And now May uh, Drake May is uh, sort of, you know, restarting in year three and you can make the comparisons to Mac Jones with Bill O'Brien in his third year. So uh, I, I'm I'm more, not that I'm surprised at this move. We talked about the Bears offense last week and how bad it was against the Cardinals and was worse against the Patriots. Um, it's To me, it's a cautionary tale for what the Patriots are doing and doing with Drake May and how important it is they get the offensive coordinator slash head coach right. All right, Greg, we're going to get into this game between the uh, Bears and the Patriots and what you saw. But first, tell the fine people about Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Price Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Price Picks with as little as four correct picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get $50, $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. I want to warn people I understand that my uh, audio might sound different from the very beginning of this podcast. For some reason, at this beautiful complex I live at, the power keeps going on and off every like three minutes. So if you see my lights behind me fade and my audio doesn't sound as great, it is what it is. We're dealing with the elements. Greg, big picture. Uh, what did the win on Sunday mean for this Patriots franchise, this coaching staff, if anything? Well, first off, before we get into that, I do want I want to get your take on the Shane Waldron situation and whether you think there is any sort of I mean, how do you feel about it compared to, you know, what the what the Patriots are doing? Yeah, so, I mean, I think if, if Van Pelt improves throughout the year, then you're not in a rush to make any kind of move. But I think, you know, when you look at offensive coordinator, young quarterback relationship, it, it means the world. And if you're not 100 percent sold on Alex Van Pelt as the guy, then you've got to find somebody who can be that guy. The challenge is Gerard Mayo is your head coach. And you know that Robert Kraft is, you know, solid with Mayo, as Burt Breer has reported. He believes in Mayo. So if you're a young offensive coordinator who make, wants to make that next step up, it gets over the hire a guy like that because he might be out the door if he has a good year with Drake May. And if if he has a good year with Drake May and the Patriots are winning, then Gerard Mayo is going nowhere. So if that happens, then you have to, you know, reset again at the offensive coordinator slot, which is a nightmare for a young quarterback. So it's a very challenging situation. And this is what happens when you hire Mayo, who's a defensive guy and not an offensive guy, is you've got to hope that offensive coordinator position works out for you and the first hire makes sense. So I think if AVP is not the answer, you might be more prone to go with somebody like Ben McAdoo, who's not going to be a head coach anytime soon ever again. Or you look at a T.C. McCarthy grow and say, well, we're just going to kind of give the reins to this guy and hope that he's, you know, better than what Van Pelt was and he brings a little bit more creativity, et cetera, et cetera. But it's a very difficult, challenging situation. I understand people uh, being frustrated with Van Pelt. I've been frustrated most of them. But you've got to think about Drake May and in long term and what it could do for him because you don't want three or four, four offensive coordinators. In the yeah, absolutely. And uh, while we wait, Nick's having a few uh, technical difficulties there. I'm gonna um, let me go. Uh, so back to the game. 
Um, I guess sort of my overriding thought, Nick, and he seems like you're back. And um, like, look, it, it's it's good that the the Patriots. I, I thought it. I thought this game was a lot like the Jets game in, in terms of they executed in all three phases. Um, they did. They attacked the weaknesses of the opponent. Um, they stayed pretty simple. Um, basically went with, especially like offensively, it seemed like they put a premium on let's limit the negative plays, uh, which, which ha- have been an issue for them. Um, you know, I defensively, they, they, you know, brought a little bit of pressure. Um, they, they manned up, they played really good coverage. Um, you know, and I think that, this is something that we talked about previously where I was when they were struggling against the run, I was like, look, just play more man coverage and get an extra guy in the box that can help you. And that sort of seems like what they've done, even though I do think, I do think that the bears ran the ball decently. Well, I don't know why they didn't run the ball more. They were very streaky. They had a few times where they ran like four or five times in a row and they were moving the ball. And then all of a sudden, you know, they're throwing all over the place and, um, we know the state of their their passing game. So, um, you know, look, it was a good job by all the coaches. They did their job. They they did what I've been asking to do. Like, you know, look at that week's opponent. Put your team in, in a position to succeed, to have a chance to win the game. Um, and they did that. But, I mean, you know, bigger picture, these two wins against the Jets and the Bears, you know, it's against two coaching staffs that are going to get blown out after the season. Um, certainly with the Jets, in all likelihood, the Bears. And it's two teams that are that were bottoming out in the process of bottom bottoming it out. So the Patriots, I, I know that they can out coach those guys. Now the next step is stack success, stacked competency, and do it against a uh, a a decent coaching staff that's not going to get fired after the season. Yeah, and of course, we've got, you know, the Rams coming up next. We'll get into that game later in the week, but you've got Sean McVay, and McVay is a a very respected coach, although they lost to Miami last night, and and they haven't necessarily been playing great football, but they're much better than Eberflus and Shane Waldron. So, you know, we'll, we'll see if the Patriots can take what we saw from Sunday and actually build off it. The last three weeks, I will say, for the most part, it's been better. It's generally been better which is good news, but but can you get more out of it against better coaches and better teams? We'll see. Patriots defensively, Greg, Demarcus Covington, what'd you see? Uh, and, and we know the Bears' offense isn't great. Obviously, Waldron fired, but but what did Covington do that that you might have liked or or stood out to you? By the way, you're, you're back to sounding sweet, so I just want to let <laughs> you know that. Um, uh, you know, I, I thought that I it was – you know, it was really good. I mean, a lot's going to be made of the Brandon Schooler Longhorn package. I mean, they only used it five times. It was effective. Um, you know, but I, I thought they, I thought they, you know, largely kept it simple. They played man coverage. Um, you know, I, I liked how they had a plan against Caleb Williams because him scrambling around all over Tarnation is part of his game. And you really didn't see that all that much. And the, and the Patriots had a plan for that. So that's, you know, awesome to see. But I thought, you know, largely this game was about the, the coverage was really good in the back end. And the Patriots defensive line, um, you know, beat up a completely decimated Bears offensive line that was down to, I think, their fourth and fifth offensive tackles. They lost their best guard during the game. Um, that offensive line is worse than the Patriots. And, you know, really like, Guys like Dietrich Wise, Anthony Jennings, Keon White, Jeremiah was a bullfrog farms, was a freaking beast inside. He was like Warren <laughs> Sapp in this game. Um, so, you know, I mean, you combine with dominating the game up front and, and you know, really, you know, bullying a weaker foe, which is great to see. Plus, the Patriots, you know, covered their ass off in the back end. Um, I thought it was just it, – it, it, was, it was really good, really effective – and of course, we knew that the Bears weren't going to have any counter for that. Yeah, the schooler spy stuff was good. It didn't happen a ton. I think he played like a handful of snaps, but it made sense. He made a couple of plays, which was nice to see. Uh, Tavai was really good. Thought they used him well. I, I like the idea of sliding Jonathan Jones out to safety 
Uh, he played like more than 20 snaps there, which allowed Hawkins to be a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Jones was leaned on as really the second guy at cornerback, and, and he played pretty well, so that was nice to see. And as far as the Chicago offensive line, I'll just point this out. You know, the the Patriots offensive line has gone through more injuries and more issues, and, and I really do think that because it hasn't been an all-out dumpster fire, Scott Peters and those guys, they, they, they deserve a little bit of credit. And I know you, you, can, you can go after Elliot Wolf for, you know, maybe not doing a good enough job. That's another conversation before the season kicked off. But, hey, look, you know, they went out and they got Trey Jacobs. He, he's done pretty good at right tackle, given who he is. They went out and got Ben Brown. He's done a pretty decent job at center, given who he is. Michael Jordan had a better week this weekend. Um, and he's a guy that was looked up as, as a backup. Vidarian Lowe was supposed to be a backup. So I think some people, you know, they look at this offensive line for the Patriots and, and they really don't think about the context and how many dudes have been hurt and how crazy it's been up front. And you just look at the Chicago Bears and, and what that O line's going through and how bad they were. That could be the Patriots situation. So thankfully, it's not that bad. It's not great, but it's not that bad because they've been able to find a couple of guys who, you know, aren't downright turnstiles every snap. All right, yeah, I, I, I do think Peters and, and Kugler have done a good job this season. I mean, I, you know, yeah, the Patriots have had some, some injury issues, um, you know, but I think largely the group that they have outside of Jacobs are people that they were at least in there too deep, where I think the bears are getting down to four and five deep, but you know, it, it, their line wasn't good to begin with either. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the too deep thing, but again, I don't want to get bogged down on the details there before we get into the Patriots offense against the bears defense. Uh, let's tell all of our listeners and viewers about game time. Game time is the place to go. If you want to get NBA tickets, uh, you got to be there. The sights, the sounds, the celebs, the music, the banners, the Celtics, uh, go to, go to game time app. Go to Game Time Picks, filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals and great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I love the all-in pricing. Tagging this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. They have seat views. Get a panoramic view from your seat on the app before you buy. I was just looking on the app. Uh, if you want to see the Celtics for cheap and, and up close, the Celtics play at the Nets on Wednesday at 7.30. You can take the train down. You can get in, you know, just get in like for like 37 bucks. You could sit in the lower bowl for about 160 bucks down there. So if you want to see the Celtics, you want to get a little closer, jump on the train, go down there, come back. I've done that before. It's a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you uh, download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, Patriots offense. Drake May, what'd you see? Your evaluation of the uh, rookie quarterback. Uh, I, I'm not going to say he graded out poorly for me. Okay, let me just say that up front. This was his lowest graded game for me, um, lower than his his first start. Um but most of it, like, I didn't have a problem really with his decision making. I think I only had two minus decisions. There was really only one, th uh, two throws, and of course, the interception. Um, so I've liked his accuracy, I've liked his decision making for the most part. The thing I really didn't like in this game, Nick, was he he was responsible for way too much pressure on himself and way too many hits in this game. Like, you know, leaving the pocket early, not hanging with plays, not going down when he could. Um, you know, he did throw the ball away a couple times. He had that left-handed throw. He had another, you know, good throw away. I mean, all that stuff is good. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and also let's let's acknowledge a couple things, that the Bears passing defense is pretty good. They were missing a couple of people, but it's pretty good. And the pass rush is decent. Um and also the elements were at play. Um, but uh, I, I did not think he played that well. I mean, you know, look, the offense, I think they set a season, uh, season high in yards. 
you know, they had the same number of three and outs, three as the Bears did. Um, all the advanced analytics were down on their performance in this game. I thought the running attack was really good, but um, May, I think there was a. I'm glad they they won this game. I mean, still, it was a it was a two score game, and right there for the Bears if they could get their crap together. Yeah. Um, deep into the fourth quarter, when that really not the way the Patriots defense was playing, like that shouldn't have been it. So. You know, it was fine. I mean, let me also point out the Austin Hooper throw down the right sideline. That's as good as the throw that you, as you're going to see in the NFL. So, you know, not a ton of plays from May in this game. Um, you know, he did a good job of taking what was there. I just he he's he he's got to stop avoiding these hits. I had him for he accounted for half the pressure that was generated in this game, and that just that's not sustainable for him or this offense. Yeah, I think we should highlight as you as you did a little bit there who he was playing against, and it's not an excuse. He didn't play great, but I didn't anticipate him playing great against this defense. Uh, I think Chicago was like something like fourth or fifth in, in pass defense DVOA. They're yeah. literally one of the best defenses against the pass. Uh, they were top ten in pressure rate. They were really good on third down. They're really good in the red zone. And the most interesting thing to me is that they're a zone defense. They play a ton of zone. So. This was a different challenge for Drake. He wasn't going to be able to scramble as much. As a matter of fact, the one scramble play that he had, which made a difference, was an impact play, an explosive run, was actually a post-snap man look. And he saw it, and he ran with it. So going in, knowing that this defense played almost 80% zone, I was very interested to see how Drake would handle that because this was more of a stick-in-the-pocket, see-what-you-got kind of game versus, oh, man coverage, I can take off and pick up 10 yards every single time. So... Th that was a, 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 a game and a challenge that I wanted to see him uh, and, and whether or not he could pass some of the, the difficult questions. It was, as you mentioned, super windy. And, and let's not forget, Chicago is a pretty tough place to play. I know the team is not good and it hasn't been good, but they play good football in Chicago. I think they won eight or nine straight games before Sunday. So th there are some elements there. There is some context. So I'm not surprised he didn't play great. Uh, I did like the two or three throwaways you mentioned. I also thought he checked down once or twice, which was nice to see. He went through the progressions, and he didn't really feel comfortable at certain times, so he checked it down, which was nice. Uh, I thought he was better after a slow start. I thought the first quarter, quarter and a half, they struggled, and I thought he he got off to a pretty bad start, kind of settled himself, and I kind of focused on that end-of-half drive uh, You know, after the touchdown drive. That shows me, you know, being able to battle adversity, figure some things out, not off to a great start, but he didn't let it go all the way downhill and fall off a cliff like we've seen some young quarterbacks deal with. So I thought it was really good to see him kind of have that in his mind of end of half situation and execute it perfectly, uh, given what had happened through the first quarter and a half or so. That was kind of a nice pick me up. The one thing that's really you know, bothering me. And I, I thought he did a good job of this be, during the Jets game before he got the concussion hit, if it was a concussion. But he's got a slide. And if you go back and you look at the Jets game, he slid a, a few times before he took that hit that took him out of the game. Ever since then, Greg, I, I don't know if it's something that he's doing on purpose. It feels that way. Like, I, I don't know if it's kind of a PTSD thing after the slide led to a concussion. I don't know if it's the coaches saying, don't slide, go ahead first. I know Ted Johnson a couple of weeks ago said, like, he doesn't like guys sliding. He wants guys to kind of fall forward. I, I like the slide idea. I, I, leading feet first, especially if you can do it, and Drake looked like he could do it. Man, slide, because he's taken a lot of hits. He's taken a lot of hits to the upper body. And he winced a couple times against Chicago. Mm -hmm. He's going to do a better job of staying out of harm's way because I I'm starting to get concerned that he's going to take a hit and he's going to have to leave a game and he might not come back within the week. Yeah, I, I, you know, I agree. I mean, even that like 19 yard scramble that he had, like he picked up the he picked up the first down like long ago, and like and then he took like a sh he took an unnecessary shot at the end, like getting more yards. Like, you know, know the situation and just you know you get by the first down marker just slide and you know and and move on I mean there were a couple other times where like you know he he moved into pressure where um 
you know, he had that jump pass in the in the in the middle of the and he just ran into pressure and got crunched um unnecessarily and even late in the game when he had uh when he had Hunter Henry for 14 yards there was a bust the the bears brought pressure on it like drake just he moved into pressure he hung on to the ball way too long and got like malachi crunched like yeah um he's got to know the game the situation the score um all that stuff and just like take care of himself a little bit more because i do i agree with you I, there were he took three or four hellacious hits in this game and you know came up limping and it's got to be worrisome all right before we get to what you like what you didn't like uh how about avp and his game plan this week your thoughts he showed a little bit creativity i, I don't know if the um reverse into the flea flicker worked out as perfectly as they wanted to but hey i'll give him an a for effort but what'd you think of avp yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, I, I don't know if it was Mayo or or what, but it seemed like somebody gave the directive of, um, you know, we got we to gotta stop the negative plays and we got to stop being too creative here um, in terms of, you know, what we're doing, like just make it simple for the players. Now they did have, you know, a, a, a decent amount of penalties again and some pre-snap stuff, but I thought the foundation was, you know, they, they, they varied the running game. It was, they, they would, go sledgehammer with duo and stuff in the middle. And then they, they pull or run counters, which you saw the Cardinals do a lot against the bears the week before their, their, their linebackers aren't very disciplined. Um, Tremaine Edmonds is not somebody that I've, I've ever been a big fan of even when he was back in the, with the bills. Cause I don't think um, he's on top of the details and the Patriots took advantage of it, not only in the running game, but also like on the touchdown to Jalen Polk. Um, you know, I, I thought I thought Alex Van Pelt, you know, did did a good job. I thought that the 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 run was obviously the foundation. Uh, he mixed in a few, you know, really good concepts. Uh, you know, high low concepts. You know, getting to Hooper using Henry as almost a decoy. Um, you know, but I thought it was it was a good solid performance by the offense and you know Van Pelt. I thought they had a good good solid game plan going in and they largely executed all right before we get to what greg liked and didn't like check out bsj 50 bucks for the year bedard giardi do great work for the patriots download the prize picks app today use code clns get 50 bucks instantly when you play five dollars and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account use code clns for 20 bucks off your first purchase all right greg what'd you like what you didn't like from uh sunday's game against chicago so offensively, um, I liked Demario Douglas and you know how they got him the ball a few times creatively. That goes to AVP, um, you know, and what he was able to do with his opportunities. Um, you know, I thought the backs, all of them, uh, were really good with their opportunities. I thought Hunter Henry was outstanding in the running game and uh, and was a big reason why they were able to do what they did in the running game. Uh, that's offensively. Defensively. I mean, guys like, you know, like I said before, Dietrich Wise, Anthony Jennings, Keon White, Jeremiah Farms, Jelani Tavai. I thought Marcus Jones had a really good game. Um, Del Pettis made a couple plays. Schooler had the hit and the half sack. Um, you know, all that stuff was good stuff. Um, the things I didn't like in this game, Drake May, way too much pressure, taking way too many hits. Um, I thought Michael Jordan wasn't – he wasn't horrible. I mean, it was definitely an improvement over where he's been the previous couple weeks. Um, but outside of that, I, I you know, I, I didn't – offensively, I didn't have too many minuses. Defensively, I thought Daniel Ekwale was terrible in the run game. He got shoved around. Uh, I didn't like um, – what the hell is that number 22's name? Um, oh, Marco Wilson? Marco Wilson. Um, but that was about it. I mean, I, I, you know, I thought overall, um, this was one of the, um, best executed games all around, um, for the play Patriots. Of course you had Marcus Jones in, in the punting game too. Um, so, uh, good stuff all around against an opponent that was, uh, 
that was begging for it, and it was good to see the Patriots take advantage of it. Well, uh, I apologize for the failure of execution on my part during this podcast. I think the wind got the best of the uh, electricity here a couple of times. So apologies for the uh, the issues that we had. It, it, you know, it's not always going to be a flawless operation, apparently, in Foxborough. Uh, so <laughs> my apologies for that. But we're back later in the week. Greg and I will uh, break down the Rams. We'll preview that game. Until then, be well.